you kind of like uh, delineated some of the aspects of uh, misconceptions of yeah. karma yes. while trying to explain what karma is. Uh, if we kind of narrow down what karma is, now for those folks who might be watching here, uh, who might think, how do I make a karma? We have actions, yes. like I talk to somebody, I eat, I take a shower, I write, I drive, all these are actions. Yes. So are all these actions going to be taken as karma or mm. is there a separate element that we have to look at it? Okay, from this point after, uh, this will become a karma. Mm. So what do you think that means? Mm. So although Jainism, Hinduism, yeah. Sikhism and other, even the Western, uh, uh, popular Western culture yes. uh, proposed by uh, Theosophy yes. Uh, yes. In, in the West, they say that uh, uh, they take the reincarnation. Fatalistic. Yeah, yeah. they take the reincarnation also. Yeah. In terms of they uh, uh, talk about karma in the sense of uh, people can be reincarnated mm. because of karma, but not as animals, only as humans only. Mm. Mm. Right? But, anyways, it's karma. So, what is the answer to somebody? How does I, uh, how do I make karma? Yeah. In short, yeah. this is where I'm making karma. Yeah. Chetanaham bhikkave kammam vadani where the Buddha states that it is intention which creates karma. And this is reflected in the very first verse of the Dhammapada mm -hmm. where the Buddha says the mind is the forerunner of all states. And the story that goes behind that is interesting. There was this uh, monk who was an arahant named uh, Chakkupala and Chakkupala was blind. And Chakupala used to meditate, do walking meditation, and in the process, it must have been a hot summer day, he was stepping on insects and killing them. And the other monks observed this and asked the Buddha whether or not, whether or not Chakupala is responsible for the action. Now, yeah, there was an action. But it was not an action with intention. So therefore, it does not produce karmic results. There couldn't be karmic results anyway because he was an arahant already. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's another area we can look at. Yeah? But he, because he had no intention of killing, and that intention has sort of three motivating factors. Loba, dosa, more. Loba, is greed, aversion, and delusion. Now, if we are motivated by these three, then the intention guides your action in a, in a detrimental path. On the other hand, this is where the human power comes in. Through the understanding of the Noble Eightfold Path, you convert these negatives into aloba, adosa, amoha, meaning non-greed, non-aversion, and non-delusion. This is effort. We have to learn, we have to make it, we, we have to apply ourselves to it. Nobody can help us. Buddha can advise us. But that we take this destiny into our own hands. Use that understanding to direct our intention, and our intention will direct our action, in speech, body and mind. When the, uh, these three are engaged, then you have either intention in the wrong direction or intention in the right direction. Okay? So this is again unique to Buddhism. That we have the authority, we have the power that gives us manusya. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that, that highest level. Now the shortest answer to what is karma, how does someone make karma is Whenever the intention, I would say volition, intention, yeah, is actually closely associated. I would yes. say volition, chetana, yeah. uh, is associated. At that point onwards, anybody creates karma. Yeah. All right. So, shouldn't we give any idea to anybody that karma is not a free pass to kill anybody? Because people might misuse it, saying that, no, I didn't have volition, I didn't have chetana. So, maybe someone is going... Um, you know, uh, uh, walking, uh, run, I would say driving on the highway. Maybe uh, something happens on the highway. Maybe uh, that person might uh, say that uh, this was a mistake. Apparently, it was not a mistake. 
right? Yeah. Uh, karma works personal to him. Yeah. So how do we give an idea to someone? Basically, we're gonna be, uh, you know, uh, digging into that a little bit more yeah. uh, during the interview. Mm. Uh, an idea that not to misuse karma mm-hmm. because it's a very personal uh, type of uh, thing uh, to, to sort of understand yeah. because it, because we never know whether that person really. Some actions we can understand. Definitely, you must have volition. But some actions we might not about others and us. So, what could be the advice to them uh, not to misuse this uh, Buddhist karma, which is supported by only volition? Yeah, uh, it's supported by volition. Yes, but there behind that is a whole question of ethics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you can cheat everybody but yourself. Mm-hmm. And so, when an action has been performed, I had to clearly see for myself, mm-hmm. yeah, not put it against any book or anything that has been taught, but myself, did I volitionally, did I with intention, did I uh, have a desire to do this action? Mm-hmm. All of this calls for what we call the, the awareness of the self. So that we we have to train ourselves. Most of the time, we do things out of habit. Uh, the, it may it, the, it is the wrong, bad habits that we have that direct us to do this, for which we are responsible. We cannot say that I am not responsible for this action. It is my deluded mind that created this. I, I have to learn to know this, and this is where right understanding becomes the Some first artistic. yeah mm-hmm. so you cannot escape you can escape the world but you cannot so escape yourself. yourself yes this happened you did act in this way mm-hmm. but you are not a victim and you're not going to suffer for it all the time you can change the course of your journey through samsara you can change that course that is the important. so in other words uh, that means we need a great amount of honesty in understanding and in feeling whether uh, I or we create karmas. That means we need to know us too. That means the more we know us, the, be- the better we understand the working of the karmas. Yes. Well. Okay.